nature often has to solve problems where there are multiple objectives at the same time under pressing constraints for survival, for efficiency, for scalability and for its resilience. That is core to it and that's actually core to chemical engineering and other engineering disciplines. We have some really critical challenges that are, one could say, even existential. They involve health, they involve the environment, to energy, due to population growth. How do we regain that balance for nature? This cannot be done just through incremental changes. We need transformative technology. We need things outside of the box. This is what the Center for Nature Inspired Engineering does. It draws lessons from these fundamental mechanisms from nature that have evolved over the eons to solve problems around our most pressing issues. Look at a tree, for example. A tree has this scalable architecture where the leaves have the same size for a young tree and an old tree, where the stem is connected to the twigs with equal path lengths, and with the leaves nicely distributed over the crown of the tree for photosynthesis. And the tree is part of a forest as well. It is part of an ecosystem. So it doesn't live in isolation. We draw lessons from these mechanisms of the scalability of trees and how the tree behaves in a forest to develop new solutions. And we can use those principles that are used in the lungs, in the trees, in our circulatory and vascular uh, network. And we can use those in redesigning reactors, in rethinking and redesigning fuel cells, which are key for the energy transition. For example, using uh, hydrogen to produce uh, electricity in a um, sustainable way. When we choose to work on problems, we choose them on the basis of trying to find solutions to problems that really affect people, that have true impact. Nature is inspiring my engineering by uh, learning from how the kidney cleans our blood and how we can apply that to a different application, so in the filtration of water, so how the kidney works as well as it does without becoming dirty, and that's what I'm learning from to apply it in um, water purification, essentially. I'm focusing on space technologies, but also into extreme environments. So basically, if you have the International Space Station, for example, we do have water recycling issues because currently they can only recycle 70 to 93 percent of the water. What happens is that every time there has to be a resupply from Earth and that is of course very cost effective. It is not only space though because also on Earth we do have people that still lack access to water. So what I'm looking into is trying to find solutions for that. What I'm looking into is finding a nature-inspired multifunctional surface that actually creates this kind of absorbing effect that astronauts as well as people on Earth can, um, through their breathing, sweating and other things that they do in space or on Earth, um, produce water, excess water, and therefore basically this surface absorbs it and then can recycle it in a later stop. The networks are found everywhere in nature. So, you know, you have the nests of insects, uh, even, even buildings that humans live in, uh, the architecture can, can interfere with how humans interact with each other. Nests, you know, the, how the tunnels are organized can, can affect the way insects interact with each other. So the question that I'm trying to ask is, you know, how does the architecture of such a structure can influence the way cells communicate and make decisions? And thinking about the ideas of how we can scale these techniques up. Because if you can't scale something up, then it will not have this impact for the world. Well, we have only one planet, one Earth. We need to live in balance with nature for the survival of humanity. There is a climate, climate change going on. We need to go towards the environmentally friendly processes. For So the, the manufacturing is important, but if it can go by a way of uh, environmental friendly way, so that means we are saving our environment, which is crucial for everybody. I think the most important part is about the energy resource is one of the key issues of the world today. And these two uh, technology, the one PM fuel cell uh, with the hydrogen, with the feedstock, is a very promising energy energy conversion technology and the CO2 reduction is a technology driven by the renewable electricity that is very emerging and promising ones for the energy storage. 
because it can convert CO2 into the fine chemicals and the valuable fuels. We may have all kinds of constraints as well that are social, economical. So we need to find solutions that rebalance society with nature. This is why we should care about transformative solutions that can more quickly, they can accelerate innovation, responsible innovation. Nature-inspired solutions developed at the Center for Nature's Bioengineering at UCL is doing exactly that.